Let's talk about the high notes. Now, a couple of things about high notes. One, it's the blow notes in the top four holes that bend. The other thing is that they are high notes. If you look at a guitar neck, the frets on the low notes are far apart, and they get closer and closer and closer together to the point where you could hardly think you could even get your fingertips between them on the, on the highest mm. notes on the neck. That's a great analogy. And each one of those frets defines a sweet spot for producing that note. You could take the frets away and still find the notes, but it'd be a little harder. Well, you've got a kind of a fretless guitar inside your mouth, and those high notes can be hard to find because the sweet spot for the bend is very narrow. You can very easily pass right through it, and you might hear a momentary disturbance. Um, it's kind of like you're driving down a country road and there's a mailbox and you want to reach out the car window, maybe it's on the left side, and put a letter in that box. If you try and do that at 50 miles an hour, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the letter in the mailbox. You have to slow way down saying, okay, I can reach in there. And that's what you initially have to do learning your high blow bends. And they could be high draw bends on something like an XB40 or something that bends on all notes. Let's talk a little bit about tongue blocking here as well. Okay. <clears throat> Some folks will go to a pucker to play their high blow bends. And I have to confess, I still have that tendency. Mm -hmm. I don't always play them uh, with a tongue block. By the way, in my experience with this is with students, is that those who started in a pucker find it quite difficult as they later have learned how to tongue block bend to employ tongue block blow bending. Though the students that I taught bending in a tongue block from the very beginning, it takes them the same amount of time to master the blow bends as it would say someone who was pucker bending. Okay, so it depends on what you're familiar with I, basically. It, yeah. One tip about learning the, the high blow bends is it's easier to do on a low pitched harmonica. Great. You know, if I take a low D harmonica, like this here, Thunderbird, uh, it's pitched a lot lower than this A harp or a C harp or a high F harp or something like that. So because you're kind of further down the guitar neck, so to speak, in absolute terms of pitch, even though you're on the same whole numbers, the notes are lower, you've got a wider fret, so to speak, and it's a little easier to find the bend. Mm. So that can be very helpful if you've got a low pitched harp, or whatever you've got, you know, if it's a G or an, you know, a low F or a low D, whatever it mm -hmm. happens to be. That's not a bad place to start, just to, because it makes it a little more accessible. Uh, and it's going to be far, fairly far forward in the mouth. If I play, let's say, uh, blow eight. Now you notice I've kind of got, and I, I normally don't tense my lips at all. I find that I've got just behind the tip of the tongue, I've got the, the tongue actually touching the roof of the mouth on that sort of front porch, and then the part immediately behind that I'm kind of raising to block out some of the space in the chamber. I'm making the chamber smaller, but it's all with the front of the tongue and very far forward in the mouth. Because again, I'm going for a very small chamber for a very high note. Pretty much the same thing going on with nine, and this is still on an A harp. Now you hear there, I got all the bends, but you might have heard the little funny sound when I first went to try and bend that. Mm. Sort of like the note just kind of twanged a little bit. That was me going past the mailbox at 100 miles an hour. Mm. <laughs> I passed right through the sweet spot and back out. Uh, and that's what often you'll hear when somebody first tries to bend the, the high bends. They just are going right past it. You have to slow down and find that sweet spot. It's going to be far forward, you know, whether you're tongue blocking or, or puckering. Do it with the pucker. Like I've got my tongue in a kind of a, and I know not everybody can do this, in this sort of curled up. It's almost like if you were to make the z, the sound of of z, or for our Canadian listeners, z, um, with the front of the tongue, you're kind of z, you're you're pushing air past almost like this little flapping um, uh, front tip of the tongue. It's right in that little area. and it's pretty close to the back of the upper front teeth. So yeah, whether I'm doing it tongue blocking or puckering, it's all way far forward with a very small chamber. You know, that's, it's not so much that they're blown outs, because high draw bends, pull out the XB40,
Same technique. Same technique in the same place, I'm just inhaling. And a student can experiment with this with standard key harmonicas, a D harmonica, six draw, and a G harmonica, eight blow, where the same pitches. So that's one of the interesting things is what Winslow's bringing up is that pitch bend in that chamber is still the same thing. It's, you're now just blowing. Yeah. Still feels different, but. <laughs> well, you figure <laughs> you've got a lot of soft like... tissue in there mm -hmm. and it's moving in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that changes the sensation of doing it. Mm.